live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. The Tasmanian Parliament will sit under minority for the first time since 2014 when it returns tomorrow. For more, we're joined by state political reporter Josh Duggan. Josh, what can the Liberal government expect tomorrow? Kim, this firms as one of the most important sitting weeks of the Liberal Party's nine-year tenure. There is any number of ways that this week could turn out. The two new independents have signed on to a deal supporting the government, but their resolve will be tested through no confidence votes and other motions are expected as well. And at the end of all that, the Treasurer will hand down his second budget. It's make or break time for the man holding the state's purse strings. And it's been a lot of work, but uh, great teamwork. And... The Treasurer is promising a budget that delivers on all fronts. Strong business confidence, supporting employment, uh, stronger public services. There's more spend on health and education than ever before and a $40 million boost to low income supports. Despite economic headwinds... So the budget uh, does provide a pathway to surplus. Michael Ferguson's spin cycle is in overdrive. This sounds like it's going to be the magic pudding budget. This and future budgets will be impacted by the AFL deal, but it's unclear if the Treasurer cited it before the Premier signed it. I won't be discussing Cabinet matters. I have had uh, quite a proper engagement in that. He hasn't been transparent with his own government members. Just two years after promising strong, stable majority government, the Liberals will head to Parliament and sit in minority. Just getting to Thursday's budget could be a challenge in itself. The new independents have signed on their support, but Labor will still seek a no-confidence motion. What Tasmanians need right now is a government that is focused on the right priorities for our state. And the Greens will argue to let councils refuse short-stay permits. This is an opportunity for the new independents to show us what they're made of. I do take them at their word that they've said that they won't be destabilising. After a week in the spotlight, the defectors have more decisions ahead. And Josh, you also have an update on a federal grant which was provided for the Cradle Valley Cableway. That's right, Kim. The state's going to lose $30 million it was awarded back in 2018. The Albanese government's ending the Community Development Grants program and it's taking back any funds that weren't going to be spent by, the, by June 2026. The state government recently submitted a business case, but it said the project wouldn't be completed by that time. They've now asked for an extension, but it appears at this stage the funds are lost. Kim? Okay, thank you very much there, Josh Duggan. Tasmania's fruit growing industry says the federal government's decision to limit the amount of hours overseas students can work could decimate local businesses. They're calling for the changes to be paused, warning it will also harm students' ability to manage the cost of living. Strawberries begin here at JCLM Farming, with millions of plants going from ground to garden here. Overseas students, the bulk of the workforce, also growing their incomes. It's very important to study here and have the income. I've been able to work more, more hours. And I'm also learning about new things and new cultures here. We wouldn't have uh, survived through COVID without having uh, basically unlimited hours for student, um, student visa holders. That's set to change. Student visa working hours will be slashed to an average of 24 hours per week on July 1. The Home Affairs Minister recently defending the changes. Those students are meant to come here to study. And the bar that we set for their entry is simply whether they will be able to perform in Australia's education system. The minister also says their focus will be putting students into programs that are less exploitive and more targeted. Jack wants a scheme paused, saying it will leave him with slim pickings. Their working hours would be half what they currently are, so we would need twice as many people to do the same amount of work. Their ability to ripen also harmed, recently pausing a $10 million expansion. Nobody in their right mind would develop more land like that unless they know that, uh, that they're going to have the people. Tasmania's fruit industry warns we're not out of the COVID wood yet. Our backpackers haven't returned in the numbers that they have previously. They're slowly building up but I don't know if they'll ever actually get back to the numbers we had before. If there are less students working on other farms, that will mean that there'll be less people in general. Workers are worried about their income amid soaring inflation. Uh, my housing is growing, my rent is growing up, uh, so it's going to have a greater impact. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. 
Police have confirmed there are no suspicious circumstances after a body was found at Tranmere yesterday afternoon. Authorities were called to the foreshore area at Tranmere Point after a member of the public located the man's body. He has been identified as a local man aged in his 20s. A report will now be prepared for the coroner. Health bodies are pressuring the state government to step in with the impending closure of Hobart St Helens Mental Health Facility. A mother and baby unit with three beds will be established, but 31 beds and other support programs will be lost. There is nowhere else in Tasmania for those people to go. The 31 mental health beds provide life-saving, suicide-preventing care. A government spokesperson says it is working with HealthScope and other private providers to minimise any loss of care. Parents are being urged not to ignore the signs of gluten intolerance in children. Statistics show 80% don't get diagnosed, impacting their future quality of life. For young Tasmanian Neve Drotsky, navigating a world with celiac has many challenges. You're not allowed certain foods that have gluten and barley, wheat and most things like that. Neve's mother had witnessed the symptoms of the disease for four years but found it a battle to get a diagnosis. We got sent to a paediatrician um, who reluctantly gave us some blood tests and from that stage uh, the results came back and it was pretty obvious. Celiac Australia launching a year-long campaign educating Tasmanian parents on what to look for if they suspect their children are gluten intolerant. It can often be masked by other signs and symptoms. Um, particularly in children, it can be a little bit tricky to diagnose because it can be asymptomatic. Signs include lethargy, iron deficiency, poor weight gain or changes in behaviour. One in 70 Australian children are suspected to have the disease, but 80% go undiagnosed. The organisation pleading with parents to get their kids checked as soon as possible if they notice any symptoms. It can lead to other autoimmune diseases and also diseases such as osteoporosis. Thanks to Sam's persistence, Neve now enjoys a healthy life. She's grown. Um, she's put on two kilos since diagnosis, where she hadn't put on um, more than two kilos in the three previous years. I don't have that much tummy aches. My iron level's starting to go back up. More details can be found on the Celiac Australia website. Mark Zita, 7 Tasmania News. Judo may be steeped in Japanese history, but it's a Tasmanian hoping to master the martial art next month. Tobias Sampson will throw down at the globe's biggest games for those with an intellectual disability. A sport steeped in history is also one of the more inclusive, something Hobart's Tobias Sampson knows well. The competition will be very challenging. He's heading to France for the Virtus Global Games, a giant of the sporting calendar for those with an intellectual disability. Under the guise of his coach, Lewis Willing, Samson has used the judo ring to become a more rounded person. It's been amazing. He's gone from strength to strength with his judo training, uh, as well as in life skills. A rigid training regime will have Samson in peak form when he takes on the elites from Japan, Germany, the UK and France. He has form at the highest level, having claimed a silver medal in the Virtus Oceana Games last year. But it's not all about what happens on the mat. Oh, just making new friends, um, helping others out and just chatting around. The Virtus Games' wider motive is to expand judo in the Paralympics to include those with an intellectual disability. At the moment, it only caters for the vision impaired. But the main focus for now is on gold for Australia and Montague Bay's Shea Shin martial arts team. I'm keen to see how he goes and he'll give it his best shot and that's all that we can ask. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Launceston Christian College will represent the state at a national science event after winning the University of Tasmania's Science and Engineering Challenge Grand Final. Eight schools from around the state had their problem solving and design skills tested across a variety of activities. The final challenge saw teams design a bridge and test its strength under various weights. The event helping promote careers in science, engineering and medicine, with experts saying the opportunities are due to expand. 62% of future jobs will come from science, technology, engineering, mathematics and medicine. 
So the workforce of the future was out today. I'm looking to go into somewhere where like machinery working on, trying to create machines. So yeah, uh, that's where I'm trying to head to and this is a good starting place. Currently just 25% of university graduates have studied STEM courses. A Launceston landmark is notching up a century, preparing to mark the anniversary with a trip down memory lane. A new exhibition will celebrate the Coates Paytons building, which quickly became a staple of the community. Spinning into a hundred years, a lifetime of memories and legacies live on. Even when I was a kid, I grew up coming here on my school holidays. I can remember the smell of, uh, of raw wool. Paytons and Baldwin's expanded its empire beyond Britain, opening its first overseas mill at Glen Dew in 1923. The first yarn wheeling into production soon after, marking the start of a multi-generation business. My father worked here for 40 odd years. To walk into the place, you just had a uh, real family orientated, friendly atmosphere. Known later as Coates Patents, the company employed more than 2,000 people at its peak, quickly becoming an economic powerhouse for northern Tasmania. Trades, electricians, plumbers, mechanics, painters and so on who were being trained here for work in the mill but obviously went off into the community as well. And now as the major milestone approaches, an interactive project is being launched, bringing together a full picture of the mill's history. From stories from the factory floors to the tales of the office, former workers are encouraged to roll back their mental clock. We're really keen to recognise almost 75 years of history. Since it closed its doors 26 years ago, this building has been given a new lease of life, but in certain parts, it's as if time has stood still. It's not a building to me, it's a, it's a place of work and happiness. The door of hope will step back in time for a centennial open day on November 25, where locals can once again spin a yarn or two. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. The team's a lot different to the one which dominated the 2010s, but the Northern Bombers are back around the top of the table. Four wins straight has the side prime for a one versus two showdown against the Tigers this weekend. The team's attacking stocks have been damaging in front of goal. When you look at like Theo Ives at the moment, he's just, you know, he's coming on, he's a big strong man, but he's only still young, and Jack Ahern, and, and obviously Brendan Leary didn't play on the weekend, but we've got some firepower up there, but I think our mids are doing a great job and, and get the ball down there, so it's probably a whole team effort. Cox Goodger says Brandon Leary is a good chance of returning this week after being out injured. And that brings us to the Crips TSL Player of the Year votes after seven rounds. Brodie Powfreman claimed the three for Launceston against Glenorchy, edging out Jake Hines who had a day out with nine goals. North Launceston's Ben Simpson is on the board following the win over North Hobart. And Kingborough's Lockie Clifford is moving up the order, named best on against Clarence. Clifford's teammate Jack Tompkinson remains out in front on nine. Sam Green is on seven, while there's a long list all tied on five. Angus Pearce, Alex Williams and Bailey Davies were front of the pack in the state motocross championship at Cambridge Park. Cooper Ford and Jed Gray were also strong in their classes. The series heads to Oatlands next. Madison Brooks has put away the Hockey Roos' only goal against India in the third and final match of their series. The Tasmanian cleanly converted a pass from Abby Wilson in the 25th minute to put the side one goal up. Oh, that's a brilliantly executed piece. Matty Brooks on the end of it. The game ended in a one-all draw, but the Aussies won the series 2-0. Launceston's Liam Johnston has enjoyed a moment in the sun, setting a provisional best time of 3 minutes and 7 seconds in the 2.6 kilometre opening prologue of the Tour of Japan. His time was later eclipsed by one second, but it puts him in good stead for the series proper. Nathan Earl is back defending his Tour of Japan crown. The Hobartian finished the prologue 6 seconds off the pace with the 15th fastest time. Stuart McSwain has passed the landmarks of Old Trafford and the set of Coronation Street only in gruelling conditions as he took on the 10km Great Manchester Run. The King Islander kept up the pace in the chase group and managed a podium finish claiming bronze. Second, Stuart McSwain does indeed beat Jack Rayner, his compatriot, for third. Great race between the three of them. His time of 28 minutes 25 was eight seconds behind the winner. 
And the Clarence Zebras have been knocked out of the Laco Seljak Cup race. The men were unable to hold on to their early semi-final lead with the Devonport Strikers pushing back for a 3-2 win. The Zebras will be looking to turn their luck around when they face the Strikers again in the NPL this weekend. We'll come out with a different game plan and hopefully take it to them again at home and get some, get some points on the board. Meanwhile, in the Women's Statewide Cup, South Hobart has progressed to the big dance. After downing the Devonport Strikers 5-2, South will be eyeing off more of the same, preparing for a tough task ahead in the final. This year feels a little bit different and we feel like we've got a big job ahead of us this year to perform and uh, to do everyone justice at the club. They take on the reigning champion, Launceston United, on June 12. And that's sport, Kim. It was a whole lot of local sport. Thank you very much, Tom. Good evening, Hobart, Campania and Bushy Park. Our warmest today with 18 degrees. Launceston and Devonport 17, Burnie 16. Just above or close to average the temps today. Grove got to 17 degrees, St Helens and the Islands 15. Friendly Beaches 14 and Strawn a bit cooler on 13. A few showers through the west and Bass Strait uh, as low cloud hovered over that region. Just a patchy cloud over the rest of the state. Clear skies for most of the continent. Low level cloud over the Bight and coastal South Australia. Australia and Victoria. Tomorrow the large high positions over New South Wales but still extends a ridge far and wide. Westerly winds on the way and on the up too reaching 25 to 35 knots over southern waters with a 5 metre swell. We have a gale warning there from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point. Strong wind warnings from Low Rocky Point to Sandy Cape, from Stanley to St Helens Point and also from Wineglass Bay to Tasman Island. Hobart tomorrow, cloudy, 17, 16 for Adventure Bay, showers easing from Taralea, 5 overnight, 13 the top. Launceston, 17 and partly cloudy, Devonport the same, maybe a shower for Bridport, a high of 16. Burnie, a shower or two and 16 as well, showery for Strawn and Marrowar, temperatures in the mid-teens. And for the east, partly cloudy for St Helens and Swansea, 17, but a late shower over Flinders Island, 16 the maximum. Showers over the west and north on Wednesday as northwesterly winds freshen. Showers on Thursday, small hail developing and snow to 600 metres and a cold start to Friday, just a shower over the west and far south. Showers increasing over Perth tomorrow, but clearing from Adelaide, cloudy and 17 in Melbourne. Sunny weather on the way for Sydney and Brisbane. Bit of cloud about, 13 in Hobart, partly cloudy in Launceston, 13 as well and 13 in Devonport right now, Kim. Uh, and due to Monday-itis, uh, I've got nothing else to say. <laughs> it has kicked in. Thank you very much, Merv. That is all your news for now. We'll be back later with updates. As always, thanks for joining us. Good night.